This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back what to up? another episode of No Other Pod. I'm Jimmy, mm. along with my good buddy Daniel Kuzer. Dan, what's going on, my friend? Not much, bro. I'm. Uh... <laughs> what is that? I just grabbed it for fun. <laughs> it's a little nameplate with the sport. Is this from a uh, Adult Fantasy Camp? From Adult Fantasy on your yeah. locker, your nameplate. It just plate? fell off. It fell off my desk, and I caught it real fast. It was like, look out. <laughs> uh what's up dude no games nothing no to talk games. about um so <laughs> as always leave five star ratings and reviews we'll see you <laughs> thank guys you next so much week. for listening <laughs> <laughs> yeah there uh there is no game because as we all know we talked about last time sporting kc bombed out of the league's cup with a a rather unfortunate performance against toluca uh who then got eliminated by minnesota I believe yeah. is that what happened. Very unfortunate. I, w- I was kind of rooting for Toluca a little bit, man. Like they were dropping, you know, four goals on every team. Yeah. And I'm like, do do it again. And they made it a made it a fun game with Minnesota. They did. Well, they were down two zero, and then suddenly it was tied two two, and it, it got a little crazy. So yeah. I think uh, Minnesota used up all their luck in that game because they got absolutely destroyed against Nashville. Yeah, man. Uh, let me ask you this though: Did Sporting have a tough situation with the teams they had to play in this freaking League's Cup? Because Miami seems to have a pretty easy go of things right now. <laughs> what? Didn't they? Have they beat yeah. like any crazy teams? Uh, no, they have okay. played exclusively MLS teams. And okay, that's fun. They're not the best MLS teams. I mean, they beat uh, Orlando. Well, I mean, okay, I'm talking. Single? I'm talking about uh, knockout round. I should say group, okay. group standings. Um, group stays. Obviously, they had to play one. They did. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who it was that was in in their group. Uh, I'm looking right now, and Miami. It was Cruz Azul, who okay. was not great last year, and then um, Atlanta. So Miami played Cruz Azul once, but then you get to the knockout round, and it's Orlando, and then it's FC Dallas, and then it's Charlotte, and now it's yeah. Philly. Well, if you're so, listening today, Tuesday or tonight, Tuesday, they're probably uh, Philadelphia is probably handing Messi his first loss in America. We'll see. I mean, calling it, bro. Philly does not lose at home. Yeah, that's a tough place to play in in Chester. There. Oh yeah. Uh, and you know, there have been. They, I mean, Miami looks great against Charlotte, four zero. I mean, it took almost till the last three four minutes of the game for Messi to get his goal, but at a certain point, Miami was just kind of no pun intended messing around. Um, but I mean, boo, boo this man, <laughs> get off the stage. Jeez. Uh, but they looked vulnerable against Dallas. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, they are, they are human. They can be beat, I think. And it, it God, I kind of want them to face Monterey in the championship though. That's, that would be the marquee match at this point. Yeah. It seems Monterey is, uh, nothing to, nothing to scoff at, man. No, and you know, as you know, they play in an amazing stadium with an amazing yeah. mountain range backdrop. So that we will not see because all the games are in the states. Exactly. I think that's one of the things they'll have to figure out how to change maybe going forward because Liga MX teams are getting more and more vocal about the the travel, and they're getting more and more vocal about the officiating. Like they're compl- the the official Liga MX Twitter account basically came out and said that they're keeping a very close eye on on the officiating going forward because they're not happy. Well, good because we had a terrible referee from <laughs> Liga MX, you idiots. Yeah, it's <laughs> you're well, trashing your own refs. And you know, not all the refs are from MLS or Liga MX because right. the, the referee organization who is basically running it's not pro. I forget what it's called. Um, no, they basically came out and they're like. Y'all didn't want to pay actual high quality referees. So yeah, you're getting like the lower end CONCACAF referees for some of these games. So maybe if you want a little bit more investment, we can get some of the better ones who aren't like the Ecuadorian second division. I guess that would be South America, but you get my point. (laughs) Otherwise we gotta, we gotta scrape the bottom of the referee barrel, you know? Right. Or or referees. (laughs) I I did feel bad. Those refs who've been out there, you know, working hard, traveling all over the country, catching inadvertent strays when when their own organizations basically like yeah you got the shitty c team refs pay a little bit more and maybe we can bump you up to the b or a team <laughs> that sucks that's so unfortunate to hear as, like, as, a, as any employee dude it's like oh boy i'll just go kill myself all right yeah, it's, well, <laughs> just... and 
you know, Ishmael Elfath, he's an MLS referee. He's been in right. some of these bigger games. He was the the fourth official in the World Cup final. So he's probably the best referee that is still in the competition. But true, you know. It, yeah, but I'm come on, referees are referees, right? They all they're like uh, buttholes. They all stink, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah i mean that's the general consensus that's it so it's i don't know i mean um are you still interested in watching leagues cup now that sporting's out like are you kind of over it or knowing that there's no mls league matches for another two weeks this is a I, soccer fix i got over it kind of when it hit this uh like the quarterfinals yeah uh, be, i was into it because there was like games every night yeah, and you could just catch something, dude. Just turn something on. Yeah, uh, and even some of the later ones, I I flip it on in bed, you know. Right. Um, and th- that was cool. But then I, as you know, there's now there's not games every night. Um, it's, it's less exciting, I guess. Well, and I I think it's less. I mean, I watched the LAFC Monterey game because I thought that would be a really good game, two of the better teams. But like, I don't necessarily need to watch Nashville versus Minnesota. Or Miami versus Charlotte. Yeah. I mean, that's just those are just the MLS league games. It, it was more fun when it's like, oh dang, you know, is Nashville's defense going to be able to stop, you know, Club America's high flying right. offense or, you know, Tigres versus Vancouver? Like, what's that going to be? Tigres is way better than whoever Vancouver plays regularly. So, good point. I don't, yeah, that's why I'm kind of rooting for Monterey to hit the final mm-hmm. because at least you'll be watching a Mexican team in the final. Yeah. Otherwise, it could be all MLS, and it's like we've seen these games before. Right. Um, except it's Lionel Messi, so it'll be a, a crazy time. Can you imagine the victory lap that all of Liga MX East is going to take if somehow Monterey beats Miami in the final in Miami? That'd be wild. Um, Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> but yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, <laughs> it's weird to say they they play by an, uh, an industrial airport, so yeah, in a temporary stadium temporary but hey they they made that stadium that was nothing mm-hmm. into something so yeah. i mean apparently it's a decent enough place to go to and it's it i mean hey credit to them for erecting it in whatever they did a year but their permanent stadium that they haven't yet broken ground on the renderings i've seen look incredible but i don't think Messi's still going to be here when that's finally done no there's no so, way where that so that's going to be in miami it's going to be in actual miami yeah but it's. I mean, once they break ground, it's going to take two or three years to build. Sure, it takes a bit. I mean, you saw the. You, we're seeing that now with Casey Current uh, mm-hmm. getting the stadium up and going, and it's been kind yeah. of fun to see, see the process. Everton's been building their stadium. It feels like for the better part of a decade. It seems they've been Everton. talking about it at least forever. And uh, I saw a big long, uh, big long hot dog circulating the internet from Everton <laughs> on the uh, yeah the Footy Scran account. Yeah, looks well, like an eighteen now, inch hot dog. To me, what is footy scran? Obviously, footy is oh soccer, football. Yeah. What is scran? I think it's like a British term for food. Get okay. Scran. Gotcha. So. so a lot of this food that they're sharing on this account, though, is not delectable. It's, it's not yeah. good. It's stuff that people send in to the account, like on their own. And more often than not, they'll put up a picture of the food and they'll describe whatever it is based on whoever sent it in. And then there will be a follow-up tweet that's got a poll and it'll say scran or no scran. And then it's As like, in you, like, would, would you, you eat, eat it or not? Okay. Yeah. There was actually one from sporting KC up a couple days ago. Yeah. Like the fry and chicken bucket or something. It was, it was like a, a slider plate with fries and onion rings and cheese sticks or something. Like it was for like 20 bucks, something insane. Only in America. But... Only in America, man. I'm t- telling you right now, I will not get over the vegan offerings in Austin, Texas at the, <laughs> at the Austin FC game, bro. I just so good. So crazy. Yeah. There, I mean, there's some good offerings. Yeah. It was um, a six beef sliders, mozzarella sticks, onion rings, and fries at sporting Kansas city for, <clears throat> excuse me, $25. And uh, yeah, they did a uh, 57.7% said they would eat it. Yeah. So, I mean, wouldn't you would eat it, right? Absolutely. I would eat it. Yeah. I see no, I see no problems. Yeah. But if you do follow Footy Scran, um, it, it is pretty funny. It's actually interesting. The Footy Scran header image is of the cauldron. It's no of the, the cauldron, and and they're holding a, a, a plate of brisket up, and people are just grabbing handfuls of brisket. But 
in the world? So, uh, who runs this account? It, I, it's from like Europe, right? I don't know. I mean, I always assumed it was from Europe because it, it was very Eurocentric. I mean, it's got 560,000 followers. Yeah. So, but it's... Well, uh, Ever the thing was Everton had a freaking long hot dog just hanging off the carton, man. It just looks so too long. plain. It too looked long. plain, right? Yeah. It's it's pretty bad. Uh, you'll get some that? very good food items that you see there. Um, like at the Australia Cup, there's some like pita bread and skewers that look real good. And then oh, there's this goddamn Everton hot dog that's just floppy and hanging out of the bun. And there's no condiments on it. Can you put some mustard on it, bro? What are you? Who's taking a dry hot dog back to their seat? Well, apparently 51% of the people who voted yes, scram. 51% so, are like, yeah, I'd one. like a dry ass meat <laughs> bread. Like, that'd be great. <laughs> it's just meat and bread. Put some mustard on it, you yeah. fools. But no I ketchup, know. though. I'll kill you. Footy Scran, definitely a fun account to follow because I got to see food all over. I'm going to England this December with some uh, my two brothers, and we're going to go to a couple games. And one of them's going to be at Goodison Park for Everton. And now I know I'm not going to get an 18 inch hot dog because it looks terrible. I mean, you should get it though. And ju just to, <laughs> it's just, just, to, meme. just to hit your brother in the face with it, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> just wave it around. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So I don't know. It's a fun account, but that's the story behind footy screen. Sweet. Very so, cool. Now I think someone also started like an American version where they only do like American sports stadiums. It's not just soccer because it's, mm. it's become this weird culture in America. It started, I feel like with baseball stadium food where like every year at the start of the, a season, you'll be like, this is the weird thing we're getting. And uh, there's right. some baseball team that has like a, it was like the equivalent of 12 cookies baked into two giant cookies. And then it's like 16 ounces of ice cream in the middle. That's just like a $20 giant ice cream sandwich. It's oh like, my God. Just inject the diabetes into my veins. Right. I'll tell you what though. Uh, <laughs> freaking. I, I'm a, I'm a fan of baseball helmet food. Oh, Whatever I you was can put in a helmet yeah. like nachos. I was just ice at cream. a Royals game a couple weeks ago or last week, whatever it was. Why did you do that? The well, because my brother in law had tickets and they were good, they were good yeah. tickets. They were of down, they're good tickets. They probably cost six bucks. He got them from a friend who, like, they have season tickets, like an insurance company. So they're down, like, in, in, the, in the good seats. Got the brisket achos, they're called, uh -huh. where it's it's nachos with brisket and, and I cheesy would never corn, have guessed <laughs> cheesy corn and beans and everything. And it comes in a helmet. So, okay, and, and you had good. some. I did have them. Well, and I had to follow, you know, our good producer tucker's lead and i got the beer bat so what the hell is that it's a giant baseball bat filled with beer naturally why did i ask <laughs> what else would a beer bat be i don't know I, <laughs> I don't know i thought it was something way cooler you're just like it's exactly what i said it is <laughs> yeah no it's a, but it is funny because uh, apparently the royals have a we are going to talk about soccer here soon but the royals have a two drink policy where like a lot of places you can only carry two drinks at one time so you don't buy like multiple you know, three, four, five beers at a time. You can take them back to your seats, come back, take them back, etc. Yeah. One Which guy learned do. the hard way, and I felt bad. The beer bat PSA counts as two beverages because there's so much beer in it. So you cannot buy two beer bats, nor can you buy one beer bat and another thing. Because he was like, "Well, I'm getting the beer bat for myself. I need to get the daiquiri for my wife, who's at the seats." And they're like, "I'm sorry, we literally aren't allowed to give you a second drink. You have to take your beer bat, give it to her, come back." buy the daiquiri and we'll have to do it that way so uh, that's fine it's not like it's ga or anything she doesn't well, have to save the seats the lines were a little long that day okay. i missed an inning and a half so well you have seven and a half more buddy the baseball is a long motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun that was my first world game since uh before the pandemic actually nice and they won yeah they won on that little tear where they were winning quite a bit so Dude, I don't think I've been to a Royals game since I lived in Chicago and they came to play the White Sox. So you haven't been to Kaufman in a long time. No, I don't think so. No, last time I was at Kaufman was for the uh, uh, one of the championship series games, maybe, maybe the divisional oh, yeah. championship series games. That was a while ago. I was there for one of those. It was craziness. <laughs> I bet. That was before you moved to Chicago. Ago. Yeah. So, well, there is no soccer game that sporting kansas city played to talk about but there is a little bit of sporting kansas city news i guess you could say nothing officially has been reported 
But people are talking. There is some leaks coming out of Mexico, the Mexican media, which there have been rumors uh, swirling in the Mexican media regarding the Alan Polito saga, saga for quite a while, including some reports a while back that he was close to signing uh, a pre-contract with Chivas and he had already agreed to terms, etc. It seems those have now fallen apart and Kerry Ruiz, um, a journalist out of uh, Mexico, um, is reporting that Alan Polito is planning to sign, or I mean, the translation's a little rough. I don't think it said already signed. I think it was saying planning to sign a two-year $4.4 million per year deal with Sporting Kansas City. So that would take him to about 34 years old and it would be just about a double increase in his annual salary. How, how do leaks happen, man? How do leaks happen? I just got to know because like, who knows about this besides Alan, his manager, mm-hmm. and the team. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ideally, it should not get out. That's just them, dude, in a room. They're the only ones who know about it. Quite a few leaks from athletes tend to come from agents to yeah. people that they know. And usually there is an agenda behind the leak. Um, there have been a lot of leaks, especially to the Mexican media regarding Alan Polito, this entire saga, which leads me to believe that his agent or manager has a connection with the Mexican media. And uh, we're probably all along the way using those leaks as or trying to use those leaks as leverage to get more money. Drum up the price a little bit. Yeah. I go, I hear he's signing with Sporting KC for this much. What can, what can you offer? It's not done deal yet. Well, and that's where I think, especially the early leaks about, oh, he's just about signing with Chivas. He's come to an agreement with Chivas. It's like, because once he hit that six-month mark at the end of June, he's free to sign anywhere in the world now. He can't play with them until after his contract expires at the end of December, but he can sign anywhere. So I wouldn't be surprised if those leaks about Chivas were an attempt to put the pressure a little bit on sporting, being like, if you want to bring him back, you got to bump up that price a bit. And... I don't know about you. It's true. They did. (laughs) They did. I had kind of resigned myself to thinking that this probably wasn't going to happen. I thought that since it got to that pre-contract mark, that Sporting's best offer had been out there, and Allen just decided not to take it, and and he was just going to see what the market dictated. But it seems that's not the case. True. I I also try to think about the person. I mean, obviously, this is business. This is a – he's a soccer player. That's his profession, Mm -hmm. you know, his uh, occupation. Yes. But the uh, the man, you know, going through a, a divorce or, or separation of some sort with his wife, yeah. um, you know, probably has a lot of friends and family back home. Mm-hmm. Um, so who's to say, you know, w- when you go through like a, a traumatic event or something, you want to be closer to, the, to your loved ones. Right. You know, and when you, it can feel very isolating to be in the middle of a foreign country with no real friends and family. You got your teammates. Right. Sure, they've become your friends over time, but you know, I, I just started kind of coming to accept that he was gone. Well, especially since he came over just before the pandemic happened, and then you know, 2020 hits, things start kind of shutting down a little bit more. He probably didn't ever really get to experience Kansas City and what it had to offer until the last year or two. And if you follow his Instagram stories, you'll you'll know that there was some relationship turbulence on again, off again with, with him over those couple of years. So it probably hasn't been the most fun. I think it's a good point you bring up. Um, and even players who were here before, I remember when we talked to Ilya a long time ago, I remember being surprised where he was like, yeah, I don't, I haven't gone out and experienced that much of the city in his time here. He said, he had said like, Ilya was saying how he doesn't really have many friends. And I was like, I'm going to cry because I will be your friend right now, sir. <laughs> we we talked about going to get barbecue with them and it just never, never transpired. Who dropped but, the ball on that? Something happened. Yeah. We, I, I was always a little worried if we followed up with him be like, Hey, yeah, you said you want to go get barbecue. And he was like, Oh, that's a thing that you say. Just <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. be nice when you're on a podcast. And you are. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Ilya, I think was, I, I am happy for the success he's found at, at LAFC after this, but, um, yeah, Polito, it seems he may be back. And I Not think some people it. some people may balk at that price, 4.4 4 million, because that puts him in like 
up close to the top five highest paid players in the league. I mean, that might be a little different now post Messi, but it's it's certainly he, he's absolutely top ten at four point four million. Um, I think that might make people a little bit wary. I don't know if you have any concern about it, but I guess the only thing I would say is we could pay him four point four million. We could pay him four hundred and forty million per year. Functionally, in terms of how the roster is built, in terms of the rules, it actually doesn't matter because anything over 1.6 million with that designated player tag is the same as long as ownership's willing to pay it. Doesn't affect the roster one bit. It just affects the ownership, man. It just affects the team. Yeah. You know, the club. I mean, so it's just here's what it is. And we talked about this last week, I believe it was, when there was more rumors about like, oh, you know, is Polito getting closer? Um, it's probably going to cost more than that in terms of a transfer fee and and time to go out and find a replacement for Alan Polito. And if you look at how he's played this year and the form he's been in since coming back, everything Peter Vermees said about Polito before the season has kind of come to fruition, where he said, you're going to see a better Polito than you've seen over the last three years, arguably since the entire time we've had him, because he finally got that knee injury taken care of. And that knee injury happened like three months into his tenure with Sporting Kansas City while he was gone with the Mexican national team. So. Right. If this we're, is we're a better team with him, that's for sure. If this is the Polito that we get for the next two years, I'm good with it. Um, I don't think I probably would extend it beyond then because at that point he's 34. Maybe he goes plays one more year in Mexico and calls it good. But I think overall, it's a solid bit of business. I think it would be really difficult given the views from the fan base regarding Peter Vermees and his future with the club. If he got rid of Alan Polito, a proven striker, he better damn sure nail an immediate replacement if he had any hope of staying competitive. And I think that's really hard to do. No, hundred percent. So we'll see. Nothing's been officially announced. Maybe by this time next week, we'll get a formal announcement and it's possible that he's already signed something and we may not get a formal announcement till toward the end of the season. I don't know. Sometimes they, they hold it back, but True. Seems like it's trending that way. I think, I mean, yeah, they'll they'll announce stuff mid-season sometimes, uh, but it has to, you know, it has to be planned. It has to be a, a, like a formulated thing, like yeah. what they did with Graham and Beasler right. Uh, right after the World Cup. They were like, fresh off the World Cup, they've signed extensions. You know, that was cool. Yeah, and that dovetails into what I want to talk to after the break. There's a couple other players who they're out of contract after this year, and some of them are pretty significant players so let's take a break real quick and then we'll talk about who's in who's out of contract after this year and who they should bring back but first we'll take a break we'll be right back thanks for listening to kc sports network make sure you download our new app find it on the app store or google play just search kc sports network hey did you see that throwback night is that our next game dude celebrating uh, the 10-year anniversary of mls cup I do wonder if uh, there will be some kind of fun throwback jersey that is our 2013 state line oh, kit. That'd you be know? fun. Um, you know, Brit, they ought to bring old jerseys out like they do with Disney movies, fresh out the vault. <laughs> you know, and they, they, oh, you only get Beauty and the Beast for a limited time. Yeah, They should do that with some old jerseys sometimes because I know a lot of people that probably – search things on ebay and stuff or skc yeah. swap shop on facebook yeah it'd be kind of fun or those of us who the jersey that we bought in 2013 might be a size or two too small compared to our 2023 shape uh, so let's just we don't gotta get into it all right we're all we all like food a little differently <laughs> i know i have a state line jersey hanging up in my closet that if i tried to put on it would uh not be the most flattering thing at this moment but not only have I enhanced my tummy <laughs> since 2013, but also like my chest, arms, and shoulders. I put that jersey on recently, and it was like, boom, <laughs> just coming out of it, dude. It was bad. Sausage casing. It was. It was pretty rough. <laughs> Marissa goes, "You can't wear that. that you're, gonna, you're gonna turn everyone on. There are children." <laughs> bad, deal, uh, bad deal, man. Bad deal. Mine wouldn't go that way. It would just be like, "Oh God." Avert your eyes. <laughs> oh, God. He's looking like a so long sausage on a bun. 
it wouldn't be good. But no, I love that jersey. And, and and it's got a lot of meaning to the city because, yeah, that was the first MLS Cup in the sporting era. That was the, that home yeah. shootout and that freezing December night of 2013. So it'll – I mean, I assume they're going to bring back some of the players from that team that they we'll are. see on the – so. They are. They named a bunch of them that would be there uh, at one point, but that was a while back. So yeah. anything could change. Uh, it would be great if we got a special edition of the Benny Fellhaber show featuring Sal Zizo for the 10 year anniversary. That would be we won't. so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but I do miss those days. Yeah, absolutely. Can you imagine nowadays, like, what a weird time in MLS where they could just go on YouTube basically and mess around and say whatever. CJ Sapong was talking about like conspiracy theories on there. It was wild. And now we're at a yeah. point where like, Lionel Messi plays in this league and he's about to get a six part documentary series on Apple TV about it. I'm all in because <laughs> Apple TV is excellent, bro. Yeah. Uh, dude, how come, uh, gosh, I miss content like that. I miss like the Benny Phil Haber show and different things like that. Yeah. Um, man, they don't take time to do, do stuff like that anymore. I mean, it's part of the blessing and the curse that comes with, with the league evolving. Um, yeah. the only league I can think of that has, like active players who really can take time to produce relatively high quality content is the NBA with players who have their podcasts and they work with production companies and whatnot to get them out and whatnot. I like Draymond has one where he's saying crazy stuff all the time, but outside of that, like you don't see Tyree kill tried to have a podcast for like half a second before the dolphins PR team finally told him to knock it off. Cause he was saying wild stuff. Yeah. So it, it's, it's hard to do, but hmm. I miss those days of MLS. I know. It just now we just get like, oh, match preview. Oh, match recap. Yeah. All right, here's the next match preview. <laughs> it is about Come on, now. Man. I do think there's an opportunity with Apple TV and MLS season pass. Clubs are allowed to produce their own content for those channels. It just takes the time and resources. So, uh, I think and over after, time you'll see it. After a pandemic, I think they uh, they stopped employing a lot of yeah different people. And, yeah. and I, I think uh, business is just smaller now. Uh, what, there's no more giveaways at the stadium. Why are there no more giveaways at the stadium? <laughs> I missed it. Okay. We used to get stuff, man. Uh, what happened? I, I, I mean, rally towels. Can I get a rally towel? You occasionally get one, but it just basically says price chopper on it. It's just price chopper. I don't want that. <laughs> I want something cool, man. Just, I mean, get. can I get a fan? Give a me a fan, fan. That, that has the schedule on it. Sure. We don't even get, do they do schedule magnets anymore? I haven't seen a schedule magnet in a couple of years. It might've been like the very first game. I know I missed like the first couple cause I was doing stuff. Bobbleheads. Someone ruined bobbleheads for everybody. Cause they threw it on the field and hit a player. Yeah. That's Ruin. not great. Don't do that. No. So just, I, we get nothing cool anymore, man. <laughs> nothing cool. And I get it though. That's budget though. Right. It's like, no, nah, man, we can't afford to do that. Casey Current stopped too. They were doing a lot of giveaways and stuff. And then summer happened. They're like, we're done. Cut it. Nope. Yeah. I, uh, I've thought before, like we already, we've always said Peter Vermees was kind of like our white whale to get on this podcast, which we did. And it'd be great to have him back sometime. Yeah, I we thought about it. Like, done. We ask Jake Reed at some point to come on the podcast, but it scares me because I'm worried it'll just end up being an airing of grievances where it's going to be like, where's our bobbleheads, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> why don't we get things anymore why can't i get a fucking rally towel jake <laughs> so i don't know we'll see but i, I also uh, don't, don't know say that will you don't want that you want to have jake reed on here you're just terrified of him i well i yes that is true i would just i i'd be so fucking i'd be such a bitch i'd be just <laughs> i would say shit dude it was terrifying when he walked up to me at the st louis game yeah and was like, I hey, I was like, hey, Jake, come Jimmy Mac, you know, do no other pod. And yeah, all he said was, I know who you are. And then just yeah, stared like, at me. And I was like, God damn it. He's like, I know you, big gingy. And we got beef. Big. <laughs> that's, that's not what was said. But <laughs> it was good. It was a good conversation. I, I think it, you know, it could be interesting, but I also, he does those periodic Q and A's with, with the fans. So yeah, I don't think we're we don't get want to do that him, on but, here. Yeah. What would but, we even do? I mean, uh, what would he fit in the camera frame? The dude's like six he is nine. Very tall. He is totally very, do. very tall. Do you have to send him a wide lens? <laughs> a, a vertical lens. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about before the break. We teased we were going to talk about 
what this means for players who are what the Polito signing means for players who are out of contract coming up this year. Um, you mentioned that they've done joint like announcements before when Zussi and Beasler signed or whatnot. So that got me thinking. I wonder because there are some players who are going to be out of contract at the end of this year who I think would be pretty valuable to, to bring back. Some of them have options. Um, others do not. Um, Alan Polito, obviously his contract expires at the end of this year. There is no option to, to bring him back. They would have to re-sign a new contract. We've talked about that. The other one um, who his contract, there's two more players who their contract is up at the end of this year and they have no option. Cam Duke, his contract is expired at the end of this year and there's no option. He makes $137,500. I don't know if he's coming back because he seems like he's in the PB doghouse. He blew it. He did something. Uh, He he had like one game where it just wasn't great and they were like, nah, we're kind of done with you for now, bud. And then the other one, this is the interesting one, especially given the age, is Gotti Kinda. He is okay. out of contract after this year, and this is the one that's flying under the radar quite a bit because I feel like I haven't really heard anybody talk about the fact that Gadikin is out of contract after this year, and there is no option for him. He's 29. He makes $850,000. He's a designated player that could be easily changed if we need to because of allocation money and what his salary is yeah but god keen does one who if the price is right i'd like to bring him back for another two three years um I'm sure wouldn't you think yeah i think he's doing really well this year uh it, don't we have some free agents this year as well there are some play. I mean, uh, Johnny Russell is one that would be technically allowed to be a free agent, although there is a contract <sighs> option for 2024. Um, Graham Zusi, Roger Espinoza. Um, let's see here. Who else? Felipe Gutierrez, I believe, qualify. So there, there are a number of players who they could be free agents, but they do have options for, for 2024 or beyond. Weird. What, what are we doing? It's August. We're talking about this no. stuff. It's because I saw a, a tweet. It was from from Mike Coon, who we've we've talked about before um, at down the byline on Twitter. He he said, you know, if if Peter Vermees ideal eleven, quote unquote, is healthy, there are six players over thirty and no one younger than twenty seven. So if you look at this eleven, Timelia, thirty seven years old, then you got a backline of Zusi, Rosero, Fontas, and Leibold. 36, 29, 33, 29. Presumably. I thought you were just calling out measurement. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? I thought you were saying baby got back over here. <laughs> so two 29-year-old defenders and then a 33-year-old and a 36-year-old. Oh, she's a brick. <laughs> <laughs> then Nemanja Rodoya probably at the six. He's 30. Some combination of Remy Voltaire, who's 28, Eric Tommy, 28, Gadi Kinda, 29, Felipe Gutierrez, 32, and then Johnny Russell, 33, Alan Polito, 32, Daniel Shallowy is the only one who's the youngest, and he's already 27. It is that sporting is starting to become the geriatric 11. Geriat? Googling. Hold on. What does that mean? (laughs) Elderly, old, senior. That means elderly? Yeah. Like Jerry geriatric is like this you know that's that's you know the study of old people or it's it, the gerontology i don't remember but geriatric means old people study old people oh yeah for like medicine you can like go to school for that yeah geriatric is relating to old people geriatrics is a medical specialty focusing on what? the unique health needs of the elderly so you can go to like the school of geriatrics cool man the more you know i guess so, but I mean, there's going to be some interesting decisions coming up because, yeah, I want Gotti Keen to back if the price is right. Obviously, Alan Polito, but that average age needs to start coming down compared to the rest of the league. Yeah, we're not getting any younger, right? And that's kind of been like that for the last half decade or so, right? And Peter Vermees has talked about before. Mike pointed this out too. We've talked about this before. There has been that desire to eventually have a starting 11 exclusively of homegrowns. That pro pathway Peter's talked about. That's where when's that happening? What what's well, the goal? Shallowy and Buzio. 
out in the past seven, eight years. That's basically yeah. it. Maybe Jake Davis, TBD. But yeah. And Eric Palmer Brown was around for a minute. And it's yeah. like, but then we didn't sign him. I mean, there's the occasional Felipe Hernandez or Cam Duke, who looks like yeah. they have a moment, or Wilson Harris or Juan Cousin or whatnot. But they all, they don't manifest. I mean, Pulse Camp isn't a homegrown. He's a homegrown through the, the Galaxy, an academy yeah. player. So I don't know. It's just, huh. It there, it seems like maybe there need there's a need to change the philosophy of roster building, and they've gone out quite a bit to try to gather or sign older established players, and maybe I don't know a, a change in scouting philosophy could be warranted. Yeah, it's just it, there's nothing more frustrating than seeing people sign these young, great players, mm-hmm. um, and then we can't yeah. because we're all we're all full up. You know, yeah. we'd have to we have to trade people. We'd have to move people. And it's just like we're not willing to do that right now. Right. But I mean, there's as many as if I look at, you know, anybody who has um, a contract that's up after 2023, we're looking at. Like 16 players potentially that could turn over after this year, it's not going to be all 16, but it could be a good percentage. So this roster could have year over year, a, a decent transformation. Now we'll see how many of those players actually turn over and how many get re-signed or have options picked up after this year because a number of them will, but there's room for change. So Yeah, 100%. Let's take one more break. There's a few more things I do want to hit on um, about League's Cup and and some wild transfer rumors that were going around MLS that that obviously haven't come to fruition, but we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. You. Hello. Dude, The uh, I discovered something this past weekend. A buddy of mine told me I should do, and uh, I've been watching I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robbins. Yeah. You would think, like, really, dude? You don't watch a sketch comedy show, and it's I've just never made the time? Yeah. And uh we're having we're having a blast. What a freaking wild show. Now you can understand all the gifs and memes that you see on Twitter that people are posting. Right. It was always kind of one of those things where I was like, mm, probably should watch it, but then I'm like, why didn't I? These episodes are 15 minutes long. You could watch a season in an hour and a half. Yeah. There's three seasons. Boom, four and a half hours, you're done. We're we're a we're a season and a half in. Easy enough. It's that's it's pretty fun. Our, our producer Tucker, he's he's a big fan. Um, and if you, uh, yeah, you'll if you get on Twitter at any given day, any given reaction to a tweet, there, there's always a I think you should leave reaction meme or gif or something. You know, it's the hot dog or um, I don't know what's going on and I'm and I'm fucking scared or or whatever it is. There's there's something from that show. It just it also <laughs> preys on my just stupid humor, like just. Yeah. Like talking about farts, it's it's like <laughs> that's just so funny sometimes. Just like yeah. what everyone fucking farts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're. Uh, you're watching that one. That seems right yeah. up your alley. Yeah, good times. Always nice. To, uh, you know, the guest stars too are kind of fun. And I'm such a big Lonely Island fan. I didn't know that they're behind this show. Yeah, I had no idea. Or I probably would have watched it a long time ago. Yeah. Well, hey, so. it's not too late. You're catching up. Yeah, I'm on it. Um, so leagues cup, we talked about it a little bit before you said you're rooting for, for Monterey. Um, I think Monterey has a pretty good shot to, to defeat Nashville. Did you watch any of the Monterey LAFC game at all? No. It started late. Yeah, I did not. Uh, LAFC went up two zero and, and they looked pretty dominant and everybody was making jokes on Twitter, myself included. And then suddenly they give up a penalty kick in the 68th minute. And then in the 80th minute, there's an own goal and you're like, well, shit now <laughs> it's two, two because of a penalty and an own goal. And then, uh, Rogelio Funes Mori, their longtime striker scores a, a go ahead winner in the 88th minute. And things just went wild. And it ended up being like eight, nine, 10 minutes of, of stoppage time. It was pretty crazy, but LAFC blew a two goal lead, ended up losing to Monterey, uh, in the Rose bowl. It was a, a pretty big venue. So, is that where it was? The Rose Bowl? Yeah, because there was a concert at the regular stadium happening that night. And it's so funny how they did it because if you just watch like from the main camera angle, 
it looked sold out because the Rose Bowl can hold like a hundred thousand people. All they did was open one side of the stadium. They opened the camera side. So half the stadium was empty and you could see oh, yeah. it occasionally. If they turned the camera toward like the goal, you'll see the end zone where the end zones for football games are. were kind of empty. And then there was like an overhead view someone took. And it's like, yeah, well they only opened half the stadium. So I don't know why they didn't just open the lower bowl around the entire thing. I think that might've been better, but huh. But yeah, it was at the Rose Bowl. So what a time. What a time. You want Monterey to win. Do you think Monterey will beat Nashville? I mean, yeah, probably. Right. Nashville put up five on Minnesota, but that was largely because Minnesota went down from a red card like pretty early in the game. Right. And they were chasing it. So Nashville's defense is their strength. Monterey's got a pretty good offense. Um and you're calling Philly beating Miami. Is that right? I mean, I think they can. It's in Philly, right? It is, yes. Okay, yeah, I would think so. Okay, well, if you're listening to this after 6 p.m., you'll you'll know. But um, So Monterey, Philly is what you're thinking. Um, I do agree. I think Monterey is going to beat Nashville. Uh, I think Miami probably beats Philly. I just think there's – this just seems like – it's the storybook for Miami to at least get to the final and probably win it. And it's dumb, but it is dumb. It's very dumb. It's going to look like Messi came in and, and got them in the freaking champions cup next year. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's not really fair. Well, and Tom Bogert posted uh, on Monday an athletic article where he basically was like, a lot of people are wondering how Miami made all these roster movements work in this transfer window, which is basically the most transformational transfer window that has ever happened in the league. And, so he kind of outlined it, and this is not anything against Tom because I love Tom. I think he does great work. But I was like, some of these explanations still seem potentially questionable. Where it's like, oh, yeah, they technically didn't have to use their one-time buyout on Rodolfo Pizarro because they just mutually agreed to terminate it, and that just happened to work out for them. And then, oh, yeah, Jordi Alba, he's not technically a designated player. He just decided to take a pay cut from – $25 million to $1.6 million out of the kindness of his heart. Like I know that his explanations, if that's actually true fit within the rules, but I, I don't I have a hard Not time bro. actually what's happening. This is a goddamn kangaroo court, man. That is what it is. Kangaroo court. Well, especially since Miami is the team that got in trouble for doing what we all think they're doing right now, which is skirting the designated player rules. Yeah. Who do they, who are they think they are? Kansas basketball. <laughs> <laughs> well gotta love college coming from a weird coming from a big ku fan here big ku fan yeah <laughs> so that's okay usc's had its fair share of scandals yeah so yeah it's i mean we'll know the finals on uh on the 19th which is this weekend so um yeah this saturday right saturday we'll know we'll see who is the, the champion of the leagues so it's been cool. Listening. It's been a cool thing. And, uh, you know, it's like it's not counter programming the Women's World Cup either because, like, no. it's kind of neat. You can watch Women's World Cup early in the morning and then League's Cup at night. It's been so much soccer. And you got EPL in the afternoons now for like on a weekday where they're doing that, like, Tuesday or Monday afternoon EPL game that Manchester United almost screwed up, but they ended up getting the full three points. Yeah. So who, it didn't look who, great, but who won that game today? United won 1 0 against the Wolves. And what shouldn't there have been a PK or something? Well, at the very end, yeah, the, the United goalkeeper just cleared out a couple of Wolves players in the box, but Good goalkeepers times. very rarely get, get fouls called against them. True. You got to protect so. them, even if they murder, a, a <laughs> even if they rock bottom a Sounders player in, hey, hey, in goalkeeper, just protecting himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, last thing I was going to talk about was we, we hit this. A little bit before, but there was the weird story that was like MLS is making room for Kylian Mbappe to come, and obviously that what? wasn't a thing. It was just a hypothetical that Don Carver had said. But then over the last few days, the weird hypothetical reportings that's the reporting that was coming on or coming out was about Neymar because suddenly now it was Neymar who was moving on from PSG. And I don't know if you saw the reports, but there were reports linking him to the LA Galaxy. There were reports linking him to MLS. There were people saying MLS should just sign Neymar and figure out what team to put him on later, which I'm like, yeah, I'm sure that's <laughs> Neymar would go for it. Yeah, I'll sign. I don't know if I'm going to end up in 
Frisco, Texas, or New York Colorado. City, but <laughs> or Commerce, Commerce City, Colorado, Commerce City, Colorado. It's fine. Um, obviously, the Neymar rumors were ridiculous because the transfer window for MLS already closed, so he couldn't come this year even if he wanted to. But Mbappe sounds like he's staying at PSG. Neymar is joining everybody else in the world and going to the Saudi league. So are you happy, I guess, that, you know, it was already a circus with Messi. Would you have been happy to see players like Mbappe and Neymar come over at the same time? Or what's your feeling of like how you want to see MLS go about now that there are more and more rumors about courting these megastars? That's what's happening now, man. That's the game. And, and man, wouldn't you just love to be an executive like on the ground level and just like, just, just be in the room where it happens, you know? <laughs> yeah. You want to sing right now? I know you do. Uh, well, it, yes. It entered my head. <laughs> Nobody wants and, to hear me sing. That's okay. No, no pass on that. No. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's part of me is like, fuck these guys. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want, I don't want to play them because right. we don't get these people. We don't get them <laughs> at all. And, and they just, you know, fly over country, all that shit. Sure. But now that it's growing, you're kind of like, mm, this is kind of cool. It's kind of neat. I do have very mixed feelings about this whole messy thing. And it would have just gotten worse if Neymar and Mbappe was definitely never happening. Neymar, there might've been a little bit more realistic chance. Taylor Twelman maintains. He knows for a fact that Neymar does want to play in MLS. And he thinks that he said this on the Dan Levitard show on Monday Taylor Twelman said he thinks the reason Neymar signed a two-year deal with the Saudi league is so he can come play in MLS for the 2026 season when the world cup is here. So there's a a little spicy nugget from old Tay Tay. Speculation. um, I just, I have super mixed feelings about this whole messy thing or Neymar or or Mbappe or whatnot, because it does get more eyes on the, the league. There's reports that since Messi joined Apple MLS season pass has doubled subscribers from 1 million to 2 million globally. That's huge. That, that means more money for all teams. But then it comes with the discourse of watching Messi score a brace or these free kick goals or whatnot, and people just shitting on MLS, which that's where you get a, like, you know, when you fight with your sibling and you're like calling them names or whatnot, and then someone else calls your sibling names and you're like, hold on, you're not allowed to say that. That's my brother. How dare you? Like, sure. that's kind of how I feel about MLS, where it's like, no we're allowed to make fun of our league. But the moment that like some like EPL fan or whatever comes over, I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> so I feel like that's just gotten worse with Messi. Yeah. Certainly feels that way. But it, I mean, ultimately I think it will become probably a good thing for the league. There's rumors that there'll be a fourth designated player and increased salary cap coming next year because of Miami. Probably they're going to get around the Jordi Alba thing. It's so. insane, man. I, it's we we change the rules to to accommodate another team. I mean, yeah. granted, it should make it should even the playing field uh, so other teams can take advantage of that. But you know, wasn't there some someone sent a rumor saying that like teams like Sporting Kansas City could all be purchased by other coastal teams? Oh yeah, like, like in terms and, of transfer yeah. values, yeah. And like potentially moving those teams. And I'm like, that's that sounds crazy. And I, and I don't think that'll happen. But I mean, it is the first time one of these MLS teams tries to build a new stadium and does the thing that you see happening in baseball or has happened in the NFL where they threaten to move to another location because they want public financing. I mean, there's a report that I just read today that said the Milwaukee Brewers might move out of Milwaukee if they don't get enough money for their stadium. And obviously there's the deal with the Oakland A's going on and the Raiders moved out of Oakland to Vegas because they got a better deal. So it's only a matter of time probably before that starts happening with an MLS team. I don't know the MLS rules for that because it's never happened. Um, Dude, Vegas is one of the coolest places to have a sports franchise. I mean, think about it. If you go out there, your team loses against the Raiders. You're still in Vegas, baby. You, <laughs> you're, you're still you're still heading to see John Legend on the Strip or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> well, that's why I'm excited as a you know a lifelong Big Ten football fan with with my USC Trojans. Uh, I'm excited that there's reports that they're moving the conference championship game from Indianapolis to Las Vegas. Oh, okay. So, I'd much rather go to Vegas than Indianapolis. No offense to Indianapolis, but yeah, but Vegas you guys gotta go to. The- 
you, you think you're you're a shoe in for the conference championship? Is that right? Oh no, but it'll happen. Is that because you have like three teams in your conference now? Because everyone's all this realignment <laughs> yeah, shit. We're, we're Big Ten team. It's fine. I, I don't know what the Pac-12 weird. is. I don't remember them. I've never heard of them. <laughs> I I don't know what the Big Twelve is. How many teams are in that There's right 16 now? Sixteen teams in the Big Twelve and eighteen is there 16? teams in the Big Ten. Yeah. I didn't even I didn't even pay attention. I saw it all happening. I was like, I don't get it. Yeah. No, I saw one funny Twitter meme or whatnot that was like, if you could go back in time and give one person advice, what would it be? And it was like, I would go back and tell conferences not to put numbers in their names. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. It all got changed, man. The the big eight used to be a thing, for God's sakes. Pack eight used to be a thing. So Yeah. Well, I think that's about all we have this week in terms of soccer. Um, you got anything else you want to tell our good listeners? No, man. Sounds about right. That's uh there's no game this week, so next week we'll be talking about throwback night. That's right. San Interesting Jose. that it's not and it's it's not called retro night as it right. has been in the past. It's called throwback night. Yeah. So it's gonna be big time. MLS Cup stuff, man. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we appreciate it, even though Sporting's not in the League's Cup. There's always something to talk about, so we appreciate you. Make sure you leave that five-star rating and review if you have not yet done so. You can follow us on uh, Instagram, and I'm going to still call it Twitter, just because, uh, at NoOtherPod, yeah. at Dan Kuzer, at JCMac03. Shoot us that email, NoOtherPod at gmail.com, and make sure you check out the video, KCSN soccer on youtube and you can find us on the kcsn app but until next time he's dan i'm jimmy we'll catch y'all later see ya you can't say follow us on x that's dumb